The numbers have been crunched. The 15 highest paid CEOs in the technology industry have a combined annual income of over $83 billion. That exceeds the market value of entire countries. Jeff Bezos alone is worth more than Jamaica, Iceland, Tunisia, and Estonia combined. He's more than 400 times richer than LeBron James, who's considered one of the most successful athletes of all time. Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg, who's worth $91.9 billion, takes about two minutes to earn the average U.S. yearly wage. That's the equivalent of making over $5 million every day of his life so far. Crazy, isn't it? Bill Gates is hovering around the $100 billion mark. Elon Musk has rocketed up to $70 billion. And the god of investing, Warren Buffett, boasts a piggy bank stuffed with $76 billion. To compete with these elites, the average full-time worker who makes 50 k a year would have to work 40 hours a week for, we're not even kidding here, 2 million years. What's more alarming, if you worked minimum wage in the U.S., 8 hours a day, every day of the week, you'd need to save each penny for 6.5 million years to rival Bill Gates. Seriously, it's absolutely insane. So, these superhuman business moguls are incomprehensibly wealthy, we get it. But the more money to their name, the trickier it gets to store. Bank accounts typically are only insured up to $250,000 against major bank failures, which causes a great deal of concern, forcing the affluent into a pivotal strategy for protecting, maintaining, and growing their wealth. It can all be summed up in one word, diversification. Take a look at this graph. In the top row, you'll see a low-income, blue-collar household. Here, nearly 75% of the entire household asset value is spread across three things. Liquid assets, meaning cash or easily accessible money in the bank, primary resident expenses, usually rent, and vehicles. Now take a look at the bottom row. The higher up the income ladder you go, the less reliant you are on those three elements. For billionaires, cash makes up an insignificant sliver of the total net worth, and there's almost zero reliance on a retirement pension. Once you pass that million-dollar income threshold, new factors come into play. Stocks, a real estate portfolio, and business ventures start to take over as the main allocations of personal wealth. Let's dive a little deeper into these high-level assets then. First off, investing in the stock market. Who else better to be our guinea pig than arguably the most successful investor of all time, Warren Buffett? The Oracle of Omaha was living solely on a salary of $50,000 per year. His money soon came from investing parking his cash into stable, well-run companies who presented at good value and offered high growth potential. Case in point, Coca-Cola. Buffett originally paid $1.3 billion for shares of the company in 1988, which translates to a current market value of roughly $18 billion. The key here, with most of his and other billionaires' stock market investments, is holding for the long run. If Ronald Wayne, the third founder of Apple, hadn't sold his 10% stake for $800 decades ago, he'd be worth more than $100 billion today. If billionaires aren't investing in other companies, they're starting their own. Buffett opened Berkshire Hathaway, Elon Musk founded Tesla and SpaceX, and Bezos initiated Amazon. Sometimes, however, the businesses aren't only created, but purchased. Roman Abramovich bought the Chelsea Football Club. Zuckerberg bought Instagram, WhatsApp, and Oculus, and the list goes on. The millionaires get involved in acquisitions too, although sometimes with a little more left-field ideas. Carmen Electra has a line of home stripper poles. Jessica Alba's company sells eco-friendly baby products. Dan Aykroyd founded Crystal Head Vodka. And Akon owns a diamond mine in South Africa. If the cashed-up A-listers still have funds on hand after parking some in stocks or business ventures, then a common storage method is what's known as a trust fund. Trusts allow the person to move their money outside of their estate, which brings two clear benefits – less taxes and more privacy. A billionaire could have trusts set up for particular charities or for each family member. So as you can see, billionaires do not and cannot keep their money in one place. There are certainly no savings accounts out there that hold upwards of a billion dollars. Even if the banks allowed it, the clients would be facing enormous inflation risk. Unless they put their cash to work through investments, inflation eats away at it. 
But if it's all tied up in long-term investments, how do billionaires actually make their day-to-day -day purchases? Do they carry cash like the rest of us? Or exclusive credit cards? Or does their celebrity status grant them a free pass through life? Let's look at Bill Gates, for example. When the Microsoft co-founder was asked how much cash he carries around in his wallet, he gave a surprising answer, a single, crisp $100 bill. The reason behind this actually makes a lot of sense, and it's all about reputation. Gates has been asked point-blank by strangers, can I have a million dollars? If he has no cash in his wallet, he's not forced to give away to every Tom, Dick, or Harry who spots him across the street. Depending on the price of the purchase, the opulent could use a debit card from a small checking account, a credit card for more high-end purchases, or wire transfers for when a significant amount of money needs to change hands. Keep in mind, of course, that the CEO of a major corporation probably isn't going to be buying his or her own groceries. This is where the many assistants on the payroll come into play. The CEOs will, however, pump their own gas and pay for their own dinner, at which point they'll whip out an ultra-exclusive exclusive credit card. For those with a pristine reputation and a colossal net worth, the banks come knocking with elite credit card programs, offering special treatment and a long list of luxuries and bonuses in exchange for signing with them. Of these, no card is more renowned than the American Express Centurion Black Card. If you're lucky and wealthy enough to be invited to apply for this program, the initiation fee is $10,000 alone, with $5,000 in yearly upkeep. That's all before you've made even a single transaction. Make no mistake, Amex throws in all the bells and whistles for its clients. The card comes with a 24-7 personal concierge program, a complimentary private suite membership at Los Angeles Airport, $1,000 in annual credit to shop at Saks Fifth Avenue, automatic elite hotel statuses, and so much more. American Express is a top billionaire choice, but it's not the only bank on which billionaires rely. Ultra high net worth individuals typically have checking accounts at one of these 10 institutions. If you've ever seen a James Bond flick, you'll have heard of offshore accounts, no doubt. While using the services of a bank outside of your home country is not illegal if it's done for legitimate reasons, it can certainly be a gray area. Nevertheless, be the reasoning justified or not, many of the world's richest store portions of their wealth in international bank accounts. In the past, Swiss banks were particularly popular for those evading tax. Due to the European nation's financial privacy laws, they didn't even attach names to accounts. However, Switzerland has recently agreed to turn over information to foreign governments, effectively ending any opportunity for law skirting. Contrary to its reputation, there are a lot of legal advantages to an offshore bank account. You can access international investment opportunities, benefit from foreign currency exchange rates, minimize tax implications, and add another layer of protection to your money. If the USA goes into a recession, but your money's hanging out in the Netherlands, then your wealth stays intact. The Cayman Islands are known for the best tax benefits. Singapore is considered a safe, stable offshore option. And Switzerland is obviously known for its asset protection and privacy. No matter how much money is put into bank accounts or the stock market or business ventures, there's always risk. That's why the richest men and women in the world, from Kylie Jenner to Rupert Murdoch and everybody in between, decided to hold a large portion of their wealth in real estate. Real estate is considered a comparatively safe investment. That's because the value of brick and mortar is far less volatile and carries less risk than the likes of the stock market. Real estate has shown a steady upward trend over substantial periods of time. It's also much harder to steal a house than a wallet. And let's face it, no celebrity or billionaire would turn down the opportunity for a sprawling penthouse or a beachside mansion. Bill Gates's $120 million Lake Washington home boasts a pool with an underwater music system. Larry Ellison's $200 million Japanese-style property features 10 buildings, a man-made lake, and a koi pond while Ken Griffin's apartments on Billionaire's Row deliver the most sublime views of Central Park imaginable. Mark Zuckerberg's real estate portfolio has climbed up to 10 properties in the U.S. alone, including everything from a modest Palo Alto home to an enormous Hawaiian plantation. As we've seen, the high-earning business people tend to invest the majority of their money. However, that doesn't mean they aren't afraid to splurge a little on the finer things in life. Every year, our billionaires fork out hundreds of millions of dollars on luxury super yachts, private jets, amazing car collections with personal chauffeurs, vacations to the world's most exclusive destinations, high fashion, VIP tickets to every event imaginable, and, admirably, considerable charitable donations.